Hello everybody, I am Jerry Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to Jeremy Clarkson finds out what happened to family business from Who Do You Think You Are? This is part five of the clips from the episode that I've watched. And in the last one, he was uh, looking at the patents and the information, uh, business filings related to the Kilner Jar and the Kilner factories. And he found a guy who was in Cheshire who owned the trademark or something, you know, owned something. So he's going, uh, so now I assume, especially based on the title, uh, Jeremy Clarkson's probably going to go meet this guy or find out how did this guy get the company, um, which my guess is, is he probably is a cousin and probably inherited it. Or it's possible that he may descend from, uh, you know, a family that bought it from the Kilners. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. But before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. I'm also planning to put up a whole bunch of Who Do You Think You Are's on uh, my Patreon uh, for early access. They aren't up yet, um, but I'm hoping to get them up over the next week or so. So there's going to be a whole bunch of videos up on there. And I'm going to try to keep a whole bunch of stuff on there. So if you want early access, become a patron on Patreon. But now I've said all of that whole fun stuff. Let's jump into the video. Before Jeremy goes in search of his personal fortune, he needs to know if there is one left to find. That means working out when and how the Kilners went under. It's a long shot, but one possible explanation is a court case hinted at in the Kilner brochure. Well, it seems that I've got to go to some kind of records place in Huddersfield to find out what this court case is all about. Because there is still this question of how this enormous company came to flounder. Um, and maybe we'll get to the end of the trail and someone will have put a little note saying treasure marked with an X and they buried all the money in a garden so I don't know <laughs> I think that's what a lot of people hope for when they start looking into family businesses and stuff where they're like what happened to the money and they're like well I hope I can get some of it I, I doubt he'll be able to get anything from this <laughs> And when I say I doubt he'll be able to get anything from this, I don't mean doubt he'll get records. I mean, I doubt that he'll get any money from, uh, you know, finding out what happened to the Kilner jar factory in the family business. That was a fascinating two hours. It was amazing because the court case, it was environmental. Which, must, which was unheard of, I would imagine, back then. What happened was, is all that countryside around um, the plant, around the factory at Thornhill Lees, belonged to the estate of the Earl of Scarborough. And they argued that their trees were dying and their crops were being killed by the smoke. The photograph you showed me, this one, by the smoke coming out of the chimneys, and this was 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because Kilmers couldn't turn the furnaces off. And so it went to court, and the judge made a decision, which we ought to check his lines, actually, and see if he's produced Jonathan Porritt, because the judge said, yeah, it's a nuisance, and I made a note of his line, no man has the right to interfere with the supply of pure air. I mean, this is the dawn of Greenpeace, if you like. <laughs> Three quarters of the population of Thornhill Lees worked to kill us. Three quarters. So they all wrote saying, we will all lose our jobs. And then we're told to bugger off, basically. This trip to Huddersfield is where I get, or has taught me where I get my, <clears throat> excuse me, deep-seated loathing for environmentalists from. I mean, look at this square, look. Look around, okay? The hotel, the municipal buildings. Look at that for a railway station. Look at that. And all of it was paid for by factories that make smoke. Huddersfield's front room. The Kilners had survived their court case, but the next challenge they faced was mechanization. In the early 20th century, 
a new machine from America called the Owens began to replace traditional glass blowing. The Kilners had been forced to buy gas furnaces, but would they choose to invest in expensive new machinery? Glass manufacturer Alistair Rattray has found something in the company archives. Whilst we've been on our little tour, we've been able to look this out, uh, which, interestingly enough, does mention the, the Kilner's people and... Um, the Owen Bottle Making Machine. That is the Owen Bottle Machine. I mean, this is the American one we were talking This is the about. one that came in in about 1907 or so, and it was the first really big high productivity machine. This is, this is when we moved to 40 bottles a minute, which in those days, hmm. that was supersonic. Well, if you look here, mm -hmm. by 1907, the first impact of a truly automatic machine was felt yeah. throughout the industry. And that year, Kilners at Thornhill Lees introduced the Owen. Mm. So they were quite fast off the mark. Mm. Oh, yes, they were. Of these yeah. machines. <laughs> Still unclear about the fate of the glassworks, Jeremy heads for the one important place left on the Kilner map, Connorsborough. But en route, he decides to take a quick detour. This is Tickle. This is where all everyone on my dad's side, all of them, okay. were born and brought up right back to the 18th century and half the people on my mum's side. All right. Uh, another very interesting video. Um, you know, interesting to kind of see sort of what happened. It didn't exactly say what happened. It basically just said that they had to buy furnaces, but based on what he was saying... Um, that, you know, they in introduced this owns machine in the UK or they brought it there or whatever it was. Um, so they still survived as a business. So the question still it remains, what happened? And also I was surprised that he didn't go to visit the guy who was listed for the trademark for Kilner. Um, although I guess maybe they'll do that uh, in a future clip. Um, but I also don't know if they show everything from the episodes in the clip. So we may end up just missing stuff. Um, but very interesting and, you know, another great example of going to archives, going to places, pulling out the old records, you might be able to find all sorts of crazy stuff. And then you also never know what someone might have in an unexpected place. So he was at a glass factory and they had information. So always very cool to kind of see stuff like that. Also happy to see that he kind of mentioned his father's side. Maybe they will go into that in some of these other videos. Maybe the rest will be all about the Kilner stuff. Um, but would be interesting to see what's the deal with his dad's side. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do that. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.